She is the owner of RHG TV, the international TV station or channel. Um, and she's also the creator of RHG Magazine. Okay, I got it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, it's a long story. Okay, so anyway, uh, all those good things she does. So let me introduce Rebecca. <laughs> we recently had a program and a training for our experts to influencers. And so these are individuals that have leaned in to take that journey to step into being visible in multiple medias. So they're taking their expertise and taking it to a place of influence. And we have two of these amazing individuals that are joining us today. If I could have them stand, that would be fabulous. Great. And love to have you make your, actually I'm gonna introduce you one at a time. But if I could have you both come this way, that would be fabulous. <laughs> I'll do it that way. Um, so these are two of our recent graduates, and they are being featured in our magazine, the Spotlight article written about them, and we're also showcasing them. So please make sure to check out the RHG magazine, learn more about these amazing ladies and the work that they're doing. Today I'm going to introduce them and have them share with you five minutes some of the things they're stepping into. So as they've taken this journey to step further into their influence, the things that they're launching, the things that they're building, um, and I'm just thrilled and excited to share them with you. So if we could have our fabulous Seema come on up. Perfect. So Seema Jiri is a award-winning author, international speaker. Recently, you were in India doing a beautiful presentation to how many people? 200. 200 and not a dry eye in the house. She went right to their heart and helped move them forward just incredibly. Beautiful, beautiful work. She has also been featured in, let's see, <laughs> the, the authorities. Thank you. I'm like, I couldn't <laughs> read my writing. So the authorities. She's one of the amazing co-authors in this book that also features John Gray and New York Times bestselling authors. And she is a transformational coach and shared some of her journey earlier today where she went from bedridden to a thriving, vibrant person that's traveling around the world helping others. And it's just an incredible journey. And I know some of your story is in this powerful book. And that you, let's see, what else can I tell you? you really stand for women to break free. Kind of no matter what comes, you stand in that place and hold that for them so they can break free and stand forward powerfully. I appreciate you, the work that you do, and let's welcome the amazing Seema Jerry to the center of the stage. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. Absolutely, thank you. Wow. <laughs> When um, Rebecca was sharing about me, sometimes it feels like it's unbelievable. I, um, even the, you know, I come, my husband and I come from a humble background. Um, maybe I'm not as humble because I came from a small town, he came from a village, but I've spent a lot of time in the village too, to coming, traveling globally, all over, meeting global leaders, and also impacting lives. But while we were in this journey, I always thought it was my husband doing all of that. And um, I've been given the label that, you know, Seema's very supportive, she's, she's in the back end and helping everyone um, go forward. So I never really thought of myself as an influencer. During our journey, we've trained about 100,000 people, helping people learn how to get things done through our project management leadership workshops. And um, I personally have trained nearly 1,000 people. And um, then my recovery story. And I always thought it was, you know, my husband helping with all of that. He's in the forefront. And since I've been within this community, Cynthia Stott, she's not here today, but she's the one who got me involved. And through this community and Rebecca, she's reaffirmed some of the ideas I had and really shown me how to embrace myself 
and, and my contributions in getting things done and, and supporting people. So now I am able to embrace it more and really accept that I too am an influencer. And thank you so much for that, Rebecca. I think it's Rebecca that has said that, you know, too many times we stand on the sidelines waiting for something to happen and not really stepping up. So um, I invite you all to break free from whatever is holding you back and trying to um, just step up and embrace yourself and accept yourself and own, take that ownership of yourself as well, which um, I had something planned, I had written and rehearsed what I was going to say today, and of course all of that has gone out the window. <laughs> so I'm just going to tap in and speak ex tempo and from my heart, which I've learned from people like, and I've, I've used to be in the audience listening to Dr. Michelle Petacola, Kimmy Avery, and Rebecca, and people like Janice Edward, and said, wow. I wish I could be on the stage like that, too. And here I am, <laughs> sharing the same stage. I have had created so many of my workshops. Like two and a half years ago, I have been in the process of transplanting myself from one pot that my husband and I were doing the business together into another one, right? But I've become more agile with the technology. I'm in a tower garden, aeroponic with soilless gardening, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I had created a lot of workshops. I started helping women who are in chronic pain realize and really advocating for them that you don't have to be in a lifelong disease. Medical doctors have said autoimmune fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, hypothyroid is a lifelong sentence. You have to be on medication. And despite on being on 25 medications, when the doctors called me a hypochondriac and didn't believe me, still put me on medication um, <laughs> and said, this is your way of life. And I said, they said, you have to live with it. And I challenge. It was just something inside that inner voice that I rarely listened to because a lot of my decisions growing up were made for me. That's the typical Indian way of parenting, right? Um, so, but there was something inside me saying, no, there's much more and you don't have to live with this. So I just use that inner wisdom and continue to move forward and have been able to help other women do the same thing. And I didn't realize I could do that. And I didn't realize how important my story could be. And Rebecca and I sell, uh, share similar backgrounds in where I was so afraid to come out in the front, you know? It was good if someone else shared about me. I used to you know, be behind my husband and say, you say something, you say something, right? Um, so, I've created a lot of workshops when I started my transformation coaching, but it wasn't sharing with anyone. So how I show up now is I'm sharing the different types of workshops I have. Some are free and some are paid, which I've showcased in the back. But in the most exciting way that I have really stepped up to be an influencer is to follow Rebecca's lead. And in guidance with Rebecca, I am creating, I'm compiling a book called Break free to stand in your power. Thank you. And in the world of where we're moving so fast in technology of artificial intelligence and robotics, right? It's so important. The world needs so much more people like you in here with the coaches and the healers and experts. And you don't have to be experts in something. You can be a... a uh, and a mother or a father or a friend that have gone through some wonderful experiences that if you share that with others, you can impact so much more. So I'm looking for people who are willing to share their wisdom and their strengths and their stories to inspire, empower, and educate others who so desperately need it to hear from you. And because it's under the leadership of Rebecca, you know it's going to be a bestseller, right? 
Um, Rebecca has taught me how to leverage the things I've done and leverage the community as well. And for that, I am so indebted to you. And the support of the community, when I started out, I was thinking, I have to do this all by myself. How do I know, you know? Um, I couldn't really count on my husband because his things is very different. And now it's come out to where I'm stepping up and allowing myself to be seen and being visible, and he's coming into different areas to support me. So thank you for that. <laughs> These heart-centered ways of doing things is really different and foreign to him. He doesn't understand. But he's been open enough to come and share, which is really, really wonderful. So we switched sides a little bit. <laughs> so I invite you all to come to the back of the table and explore the opportunity to participate in my um, anthology, Break Free to Stand in Your Power. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And we're so excited about your upcoming anthology and all the things you're stepping into and doing. Can we give her another round of applause? Beautiful. Thank you. Great. Sonia. Now, Sonia and I met originally how many years ago? About 10 years ago. About 10 years ago. And then we lost track of each other and then got reconnected through a mutual friend. And so it's been really wonderful to connect back in, see where we are in each other's lives and where we're going. And I love the work that you're doing and all that's been placed on your heart in this calling to be an influencer. So I'm excited to share a little bit of what Sonia has been up to over these last 10 years. <laughs> so she is a speaker, a workshop leader, she is someone that specializes in emotional intelligence and communication. She's been advocating for 15 years, helping young girls and leaders and helping us step into all of our leadership gifts and talents. I like how you said talent development. Really powerful. And has that passion for the vision board. So she's bringing all these beautiful skills together, which I love. So let's see, you've been helping groups, influential groups, step into success. You're a member of the Association of the Talent Development and International Leadership Association. You collaborate with St. Mary's College and their Leadership Center to bring forward leadership skills. You have a master's in organizational leadership. And let's see, and you're a Six Sigma Green Belt. Oh. I did that, yes, because I started as an engineer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you're passionate about helping us align with our purpose and values so we can lead and step forward more powerfully. Please lean in and warmly welcome the amazing Sonia Farrell to the center of the stage. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca, for everything that you do and you share, really. And I want to say that your <laughs> workshop, I had a lot of takeaways. And one eye-opener for me was the time, energy, resource exercise, because I'm a visual learner, and by the way, I'm also an introvert. But that exercise allowed me to see right in front of me where I was focusing my energy and time, and it helped me adjust, which is what I needed, so thank you. In regards to myself, I'm really an advocate of personal growth and I'm still growing myself. Like she mentioned, I've been a mentor and a coach for community college students for the last 17 years. And in the last six years, when I went through this program that was very transformational for me, I had all these tools that I learned. It was the emotional intelligence, the compassionate communication, the values work, the team engagement, and I was carrying all this with me, working as an engineer, and I just wanted to do more with it. And I didn't know how or what. And then I got an email from the leadership center that I was part of. Do you want to volunteer for a mom's program? So me and other facilitator, facilitators came to 
a mom's program, which is maximizing opportunities for mothers that had been incarcerated. We brought in a curriculum. We did workshops on Saturdays, and the workshops were on nonviolent communication, emotional intelligence, and values work. And what I learned was that there was a need to understand about our behavior, our patterns, our beliefs, to become aware, and to learn skills. One of the women or uh, asked a question, really, I can, I can develop higher values? Yes, yes. I, what I saw was an amazing impact because these women were able to see their identity and why it was developed. They were able to see that they had the ability to develop values and skills. They started to bring compassionate communication to their kids. I started seeing a birth of encouragement and an awareness of emotional, an emotional awareness. And what I was really seeing was patterns being broken. And that spoke to me. And I said, this is the work that I want to bring forward. So as I bring this work forward, it, I call it the transformative leadership. I bring it to individuals. I bring it to people that are transitioning to a management or they've been promoted to managers because according to the Association of Talent Development, only 30% of the managers have the skills to manage. That's very concerning. So this is where I come in to make their job easier so that they can become effective leaders. And I have a feeling that, or actually I know that I'm looking at a lot of effective leaders who at some point had to navigate through something where you had to adapt, shift, change direction. And that's, that's really empowering. And as I share this with you, I, on the side, I also love doing vision reflection workshops. And some people call them vision boards. And the reason I love these is because I get to connect with people at a different level. I get to learn about them. I get to learn about what energizes them. And it's very interesting because a lot of people come in excited and they go, yes, I'm gonna do a vision board. I know what goals I'm gonna work on. And then when we do reflections, they discover that something new evolves. So I would love to learn more about you, connect. I have a table, if you face the wall, I'm to the right, <laughs> right where Rebecca, Rebecca's dad is pointing at. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to learn more about you and what energizes you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. And isn't that wonderful to have someone want to support us in being energized and discussing that and bringing forward those things that matter to us. So let's give Sonia one more round of applause. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. These are beautiful influencers that are leaning in and embracing that, that calling to step into a sphere and have a greater impact. So we'll give them a hug of congratulations, celebrate with them, come alongside, because sometimes when we are stepping forward and we're stretching out, that can feel vulnerable. That's like a new space to be, and we haven't always been in that space. And we can sometimes feel alone or contract a little bit. So let's remember each of us as we're stretching forward, as we're stepping into these places, let's celebrate that with each other. Let's cheer each other on. That will help us continue to shine and step forward and resist that urge to kind of shrink back to familiar territory. Can we do that? Okay, great. Beautiful. You know, I've been uh over the phone when Seema had been talking about you and talking to you. Uh, one thing I noticed today, when you breathe first time, when you're born, and when you don't have a name before that, 
and where you breathe last you only have name after that and in between is all about life so far in last 25 years i have traveled 25 countries trained more than 100000 people on in corporate world but when a child is born in the form of a child or a company child has all the organs kidney liver whatever you can think of everything is inside the child but when you born as an entrepreneur you only have one organ that's called passion <laughs> everything else you have to reach out to the universe i think in this room you have that universe so today i thought of i had an opportunity to go to india to represent this body which is more than 3 million members um and that's why i represent project mam institute it has catered to the corporate world to become more successful this year their this is their 50th anniversary and this is 50th birthday year was that day when shima was speaking in delhi mm -hmm. you know and she made everybody in tears that night so we had a gentleman who is known for making people laugh guess what this guy could not bring that his charisma to the table because everybody was so sad in the tears <laughs> so many times we could do whatever we do in our powers but we may not be able to achieve the goal which we have in mind right so lot of us in each one of us there is a dreamer and doer is elsewhere but today what the world we live we need the dreamers and doers within the same personality yes. you know so strategies an execution if there is a fine line in between these two things you are bound to fail but how do we make it successful and so what i notice what i felt through today i think each one of us in this room i think if there is a helping hand in the form of productizing your passion portfolio management making choices these are tough choices thinking programmatic fashion so because there is a race for being relevant and that's growing every day and then getting it done in a projectized fashion so that you can make your passion profitable and contribute for safer planet so i use about 8 p's by the way <laughs> passion to planet so in between is all life when you breathe first and when you breathe last thank you so much okay.